Hi guys, I'm back with another book haul. I swear I didn't intend for it to take this long to have another video because I have been buying books. I definitely was not not buying or on any type of book ban. I just, life happens. And um, I know it was a couple of weeks ago or a week ago that one of my subscribers, Mary, had sent me a message that said, are you okay? Um, where are you? Um, when's your next video? So it's now. <laughs> um, but I have accumulated quite a lot um, to show you from various trips. And if I repeat myself, there's been a lot going on that I, that I want to get into it. It'll probably make me cry, but whew, I will try my best not to ramble and not to repeat myself and go over everything that I have from all these various trips. Um, I don't think that I have them sorted out, but I'll try to do them as best as I can with where I purchased them. Um, I'll do these from the local thrift bookstore. Um, if you're in the East Tennessee area, you know about Knox Area Rescue Ministries, the CARM stores. So these came from the CARM stores. They have um, basically, if you get like five for five, ten for ten, so a dollar a piece. But I picked up a copy of Yes Please by Amy Poehler. Yes, please, I have read it a long time ago, but I had the ebook copy, so I picked this one up, and it is heavy for being a paperback. Um, and then I also got a copy of Bossy Pants. Again, I've already read it, and I have the hardback copy, but my best friend has it, and when I give her books, I, I tell her I'm not in any need of you to give them back to me if I want it. You'll eventually get it back to me, or I'll buy another copy. And so if she reads it and brings it back to me by chance, I'll keep it and take this copy and put it away. But I just feel like maybe I'll reread these in the future, near future. Um, and then we have, let's see, The World Below by Sue Miller. Um, I don't know much about really honestly any of these. Let's just be honest. I read the blurb. It sounded good. Uh, but this one is a historical fiction set in 1919 New England. Um, marriage and family with character. Miller probes marriage and family with characteristic insight and poignancy, interlacing past and present. So it is a shifting past to present, which normally I don't love, but it sounded good. And I have read. Um, couple of Sue Miller. Then we have Homefront Girls by Suzanne Hayes and Loretta Nyan. N-Y-H-A-N. And this one is uh, January 1943. Um, two friends brought together by an unlikely twist of fate. Uh, friendship forged by letters. So basically they are pen pals and I'm going to go ahead and assume that they finally meet each other after the war. And then we have Next to Love uh, by Ellen Feldman. This one is also World War II. Small town Massachusetts follows three childhood friends. And then it actually moves from um, World War II through the decades after up to uh, women's rights, civil rights, technology. I can't even say that. Technological innovations um, and their uh, friendships that stay bonded. And then these, oh no, I got a couple more from that. Uh, Priest Daddy by Patricia Lockwood. This is a memoir of her childhood growing up and her dad was a priest and he is a very unconventional priest. Um, so it sounds... They had it displayed, and I'm like, mm, that seems really weird for you to have this displayed at, like, a Christian thrift store, but because of the theme, I'm not religious, so it doesn't bother me, but <laughs> it would just seem like an odd choice. Um, and then these four are all vintage. Like, the, this shelf down here, I don't know if you can see it very well, is, is a bunch of vintage books, which I'm not sure 
the ones that I've shown you. I feel like there are a bunch down here. So maybe maybe one day I'll do a um, like just a video specifically of my old, old, old books. Um, I'm not entirely sure. I don't think that this is my oldest. It could be. I found this for, I believe, 50 cents at a Goodwill years ago. It's leather. It's a leather bound. And the papers are that thin, like, Bible paper. But it is a, let me find it, a 1906 copy of Romola by George Eliot. It even has the little, little tattered bookmark. But for as little crumb cakey as this looks, it's what, 900 pages almost. So maybe I'll do my vintage shelf one day and show you. Because I have quite a bit here in this hall and then quite a bit that I have down here. Like this old beat up Dorothy Parker. Which somebody thought they were being cute and like... Hey, we signed Dorothy Parker. This is, I've looked up her signature and that's not, unless it's entirely like sloppy, but no, that's not Dorothy Parker. Anyways, uh, we have Jefferson Selleck by Carl Jonas. It is, let me see here, 1951. This one, I'm wanting to say take, take, is written to take place during, I don't know, during that time frame or right before. Uh, the Miracle, oh, I can't even say it. The Miracle at St. Bruno's by Philippa Carr, Philippa. Um, and these are like, these are book club editions. This is not not traditionally vintage. This was 1972. Uh, it takes place in 1522. Then we have Curse, The Curse of the Kings by Victoria Holt. And this one is, I think, the 70s as well. I don't know that I've ever read Victoria Holt. I know my mom did. 1973. And this one is... Romantic and Suspense, The Adventure of a Search for Ancient Treasures in the Land of the Pharaohs. Ooh, I'll have to read that one soon. And then The Cleft Rock by Alice Tisdale Hobart. And this one, I think, is the older of the ones. Uh, 1948. And it is... Um... 1920 takes place in the 20s in the southwest so that's all of that particular thrift store and then these are all from the local used bookstore we have rosemary rogers lost love last love i believe i read one or two of hers back in either the late 90s early 2000s but this was super no 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 just kidding this came from the carm store so it was a dollar so I thought, hey, and it's a historical romance that takes place in the moist heat of the New Orleans. Uh, well, we'll just say moist heat of New Orleans. Okay, that is not. Okay, that is, that. this is the last one out of those. Uh, I laughed. Dallas, the TV show. Yeah. Yep. Based on a series created by uh, David Jacobs. So this will be campy and fun. I have some weird like want to read 70s and 80s books and it la made me laugh. Big D. <laughs> okay. And then we have the local used bookstore. It's a lot of classics, so I'm not going to go in depth because you'll already know. Um, we have The Sound and the Fury by William Faulkner. I've never read Faulkner. Um, I was talking to the, the, one of the workers at the used bookstore, and he's like, oh, you like Faulkner? I said, honestly, I'm not sure because I haven't read him. And he was kind of like, 
how can you be Southern and have not read Faulkner? Well, I just I haven't gotten around to it. So as I'm older, you know, I can, I can, I can try some. I read random stuff. Okay. And then we have To the Lighthouse, Virginia Woolf. Thought this was a cute little vintage copy. Uh, Sister Carrie by Theodore Dreiser. Had never heard of this. The, of course, hot pink drew me in, especially since this was a 1970s print. Um, 1972. So I, I associate this bubblegummy pink with chiclet or romance novels. So it was, it was amusing for me to see something from the 70s that's a classic, a modern classic. Um, and apparently it was very risque when it was published. I've never heard anybody talk about this book, ever. So, we got that one. And I peeled the stickers off, so I honestly don't know how many, how much these were, but they weren't, they weren't much. Uh, Valley of the Dolls, Jacqueline Suzanne. I've had various copies of this and have never read it, so I will remedy that. Uh, Ernest Hemingway, Farewell to Arms. Again, Hemingway is another author. I have never read, and of course I watched that PBS, was it three part, um, I don't remember, was it Ken Burns did it? I feel like it was Ken Burns, it was a couple months ago, and it was amusing, but I, he was not a delightful person. I mean, you could chalk it up to mental illness, if, you know, that he went through a lot of stuff, I want to say, and had valid excuses, but... I just don't think he was a very good person. But it's not to say I don't want to try and see if I click with his writing. Um, then we have Vanity Fair. Again, I know I've had a copy of it in the past. I've never read it. I just so happened to like this particular copy. I Capture the Castle, Dodie Smith. I know I probably have, well, I know I have a copy of it somewhere in the house but not this edition I haven't read it but I will um, then we have Pride and Prejudice Jane Austen an old vintage and one this one Book League of America this one was published in 1936 I think I paid like $2 for it it wasn't expensive at all I've tried Jane Austen honestly and don't jive with her but I feel like just just try again just try again for a nice little copy and then we have my Antonia Willa Cather I just recently listened to the audiobook of O Pioneers which is the first I believe my Antonia is the third which was the second one I don't know that it says but this was just one of those reprint that they did um it says 1977, but I don't know that that's accurate. So I just have this cute little slipcover edition. And then we got Mall Flanders by Willem Dafoe. I remember years and years ago, there was, I'm wanting to say a Masterpiece Theater um, version of Mall Flanders that was on PBS. And I liked it. So I will try the book and then we have the Virginian by Owen Wister this one again have not read the Virginian I never watched the Virginian but I thought it was delightful it's still got the little insert um, I'm wanting to say is it a Reader's Digest yes it's a Reader's Digest version that they printed in 1988 it does not have a bookmark in it but that reminded me of my dad and then this one and I might need some help on this I have a paperback copy of this oh, I think it's on the other book shelf this was in plastic which my hu husband gave me some grief over it being me taking it out of the plastic honestly I don't find that to be a big deal if in the future I decide it is a big deal oh well it's too late 
but it's 13 moons by Charles Frazier and it's in a slip cover and I got it because it's the little the box I don't know why I'm calling it slip cover you know what I mean in the box and so I was like oh this is a really cute edition and then I pull it open and it says one of the first editions of 13 moons 1,600 copies have been spe specially bound these books are signed by number signed by the author and numbered 1 to 1600 and it's signed so it's a signed copy but mine is not numbered so I don't know what number this is could it be that this is number one I don't know I mean I looked this up and it's not very valuable right now it's maybe you know I paid I think five dollars for it brand new slipcover box and all so ooh. If anybody knows how I could find out because it's not it's not anywhere else in the book what number it is so that's the first printing signed supposed to be numbered so we'll do this and I am very 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 far in so I'm gonna try to squeeze these last ones in quickly um oh just kidding I'm not ready North and South by Elizabeth Gaskell and Wives and Daughters by Elizabeth Gaskell. I think I started Wives and Daughters, the ebook, but got distracted, so I'll get back to it. That's all previous. So this is today's stuff. Um, I really wanted to spend more time in, um, if anybody goes to McKay's, I really want to spend more time in their section of their mass market paperbacks that are, I think they're between five cents to 75 cents. I don't even know that it's 75 cents, but I have found books in the past that are a nickel and I didn't get to spend as much time as I wanted to because there was a reseller that was there with his phone scanning these cheapo books so that he could put them online to resell them. Bless you. <laughs> so that kind of annoyed me, but I did get to, and I'm just like, it's not that I can't come back because I will be in that area a lot over the coming weeks. So if I wanted to, after I do what I do, I can pop like five minutes down the road and go back. Um, I, there were some I saw, I just, I'm not the type of person that when I go to a store that I grab over someone that makes me uncomfortable. So, I mean, he did, he did say, do you want to get in here and look? But I, I didn't want to be that person so I just I pulled a couple off and I said to my husband that's 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 fine let's go um so I had I, think I had more but I only had like two dollars and fifty cents trade credit left but only ended up spending seven like 750 so very cheap uh, but the two I got out of that section were home song by Laverle Spencer I used to read her again like late eight late 90s early 2000s the one that I remember the most is November of the Heart which is one of her historicals I just loved her writing so I'm gonna try nowadays this one is not a historical it's a modern but if you have never read her she's cute and then this one I remember seeing it on Summer's channel cozy reading with Quaker cats I'm not sure if she said she was rereading it or she was reading it, um, but I was actually shocked to see this in that bargain section. Um, I had looked to buying a copy from Thrift Books, but I never did, so now I know why. I believe it's on Scribd, Scribd, however you want to say it, but Sacagawea by Anna Lee Waldo for 75 cents. I'm not sure when I'm going to get around to it, but I, I this was mine. So I kind of feel like ha ha to the guy because he hadn't come down that far. I'm like, mm, I got this before you. Um, and part of two, I wanted to look in that section because they have a lot of, or they used to have a lot of um, historical romances, the old ones that are popular now that I used to read. And now everybody's like making me want to pick them up again. Uh, I don't know that people have gone. There was a, a lady there before me that was in depth and I could hear her going, Ooh, 25 cents. Ooh, 25 cents. So I feel like she was picking them too. Um, but then these did not come out of the bargain section of, uh, uh, weirdly enough. 
Um, they just happen to be cheap. So Natural Disaster by Ginger Z, uh, ABC News Chief Meteorologist. I read her young adult book. The, it's the first one. I cannot remember what it's called, if it is in here, but it was, it was cute. It was about a young girl, like high school age, that was a tornado chaser. I don't... No, so this this may have come out before she had written it. So I was like, hey, I'll check it out. And then this one, you can laugh at me. Yes, you can laugh at me. Uh, I'll try to try to not be so. It's not scandalous. It's it's hustlers' dirtiest jokes. I feel like I have a I have a really tacky sense of humor sometimes. So I was like, for a quarter, if I can make myself laugh during hard times. So be it. And then these last ones my husband found. He is like a bloodhound when we go to the used bookstore. He finds the best things unintentionally. I don't know how he has luck, but he got me into, he found the Tim Dorsey series, the Surge Storms. He found those and got me on them. Because he'll just randomly pick something off off the shelf. He's like, oh, ha, ha. And I believe there are four or five more of these that are on thrift books and I may order them. And I just realized when I got home that they are also Regencies. I didn't take the stickers off, but these are all kitten books. So we have Summer Kittens. These are like basically novellas. They're all three in one. So short stories. Mistletoe Kittens. We have Christmas Eve Kittens, Wedding Day Kittens, Magical Kittens, so Halloween, Autumn Kittens, and Spring Kittens, Zebra Regency Romances, all with the kitten as a primary character. I believe there's one more, no, I think there are two more winter ones. A Halloween one and um, I'm wanting to say another summer one. They may or may not be purchased um, before the end of the day. So he found these. He found these. So if that doesn't tell you he's a kitten lady as much as I am. Um, I had intended on participating with um, Sarah from the Bookish Knitter is doing um, oh shoot series a thon I can't remember the name of it. it was basically it had challenges and you were to read basically like Harlequins imprints of Harlequin and I had them all picked out and I have not read like I'm I'm just not in that mindset right now stuff stuff's happening. But it's not to say I won't go and finish them even after because it runs through next Sunday. I won't read these by next Sunday, but I'll have them so that I can kind of extend the challenge on my own. But there was one that was pick a book with a summer cover. So I have The Dalmatian Dilemma by Cheryl Harper. Um, pick one that was published in 2021. So I have Scandal at the Speakeasy by Laura Robinson. Um, one... Uh, from this one this one confused me because it can also count towards summer but it's a uh, written by an own voices author so we have sex on flamingo beach by marcia king gamble i lied i didn't start the first couple of pages of this one look at this cute bookmark my sister made me she makes the cutest bookmarks look at this that's adorable and then these two were If I'm not mistaken, one written before 2000. So we have Love in the Air by Nan Ryan. This one can also count like this one does. I loved Nan Ryan. And I had not seen any books from her for a while and just recently found out she passed away like four years ago, which made me sad. Um, and then it was read a book from an imprint that no longer exists, which this one can count because it's silhouette. But I have Love's Last Chance by Elizabeth Slater, which is a rosebud romance. Has anybody heard of rosebud? They have the cutest little, like they all have the pink sprayed edges. I have a couple of more. And I know that I got them at a used bookstore years ago. 
I don't know that they're worth anything because they're so cute and they're tiny. Yeah. Um, like I said, oh, I am listening to Malibu Rising by Taylor Jenkins Reid. And I didn't have high hopes for it because of me and my... I did not get along with Daisy Jones and the Six. Like, that book was terrible. If you liked it, I love that for you. And I wish I had that experience. I think maybe because I read it rather than the audio. And everybody said that it was much better as an audio. Um, but I'm loving it. Like, Malibu Rising. It's fun. It's one of those... It bounces between... The 50s, the 60s, the 70s, and the 80s. So it kind of goes, it'll go through that timeline and then go back or jump. So I recommend it. I think I have three more hours left of it. Um, these two, I'm going to show you randos. This is going to be a long video. And if you watch to this point, I love you. Like, we can be besties. Um, my Big Fat Queer Life by Michael Thomas Ford. I can say that this is my uh, Pride Month read along with my oh I was wearing my pride shirt today sounds gay I'm in I love this shirt Etsy if you want it Etsy just go I think I typed in pride month cat and saw all the the stuff that they have and then bound my this is one I just dug out of the storeroom as well bound by honor by Colette Gale this is an erotic novel of Maid Marian my my I was downstairs with my husband he was playing video games he said well come sit with me so I was like okay I'll dig through my books and I found this don't remember when I bought it could have come from a uh, book outlet at some point I might read that and the last thing this is my cute little crumb cake of a half anniversary half birthday present our anniversary was Thursday we've been married five years and then my birthday is July 20th so he was like, I had been mentioning wanting it, wanting an e-reader. I have a, a Nexus tablet. It's starting to get kind of slow and laggy because it is old. But I was like, I don't want a single source e-reader. I don't want a Kindle because I don't want to be stuck with Amazon. I just don't. I don't want a Nook because I don't want to be stuck with Barnes & Noble. I have a Nook. I love it. It's a simple touch. But I don't like being pigeonholed so most of the time I will just read on my phone because I can have all of my different apps and I found this I think it's European I love it I just have to find a case for it but it's the tiniest little like it's called a books poke so like poke three and I'll try to turn it on I know I've got too long on this video but it's Android it's it's black and white so it's basically like a simple touch but it's android so you can do everything that you would do on an android phone and it's delightful so if you are the same as me that you like to read ebooks but you don't want a kindle you don't want a nook you don't want to be pigeonholed you can get Kindle books on here. You can get Nook. You can get your Google Play books. You've got Overdrive. You've got Libby. So this means that you can do everything. So this is not sponsored. That would be awesome. But I just happened to find this when I was looking. But it's just pretty, pretty basic. So I'll show you Kindle. Even though I said I didn't want to be pinch and hold into Amazon. But, I mean, it will pull up the same, looks the exact same that it'll show you your, not now, Kindle, not now, your Play Store, your library. I mean, and it's the same, like, you pull down, you've got your same drop downs. I feel like Steve Donahue, he, he and his tech, I was watching his last video, and he and his technology obsession like he would like this and I'm not sure about the size because if you can tell it's pretty small which is what I like so I'm telling you it's $189.99 so it's pretty reasonable I mean it's not as cheap as like say a, a Kindle Fire but it's totally worth it like I like it <laughs> but the, the thing is I said I didn't also want something like this do you see? Because I'm like a bird with shiny things that if I can see my reflection, that's like, 
where I get distracted and want to do something else. This you can do, like solitaire and everything like that. You can do anything Android. I could go and look at the news. I could go and look at Instagram, but I'm less inclined to because it's black and white so that I can actually legitimately use this to read. So, that's it. That's a 30 minute video. I think it's the longest I have ever done, but um, let me know if you've read any of these, especially the classics. What do you think of the classics? Um, what you think I should read next? A kitten book? Like I said, I'm not really... I am listening to Malibu Rising. I'm still reading a historical romance novel that I had picked up at a tent sale last year that it's like beat up. Um, it's messed up. It's it's intense. And then I did start reading, um, oh shoot. I don't know that I can get to it quickly without adding some more time. Yes, I can. It's right here. Um, Hail Mary by Andy Weir. I don't know if you can see that. My Goodreads. Yeah. I think I'm 50 pages in. It's okay. Like I, I read The Martian years ago and it was, it was not my fave. I love the movie so much better. And I couldn't get into Artemis. Like, Artemis was terrible. I never did finish it. Um, but this one is, is decent. So, I have it. But that's, that's, that's all. Like I said, I can do my shelves, my old stuff. Um, my cookbooks. Nobody cares about cookbooks. But there's plenty to read. I have plenty to read. I'm not in a good mindset right now. Um, that may be why I just kind of continue with audiobooks for a while. It's not to say that my mood won't change, but we shall see. But um, I hope you guys are having a good day. Uh, we'll have a good start to the new work week. Um, if any of you are like going on vacation, since it is the summer, have a good summer vacation. If you are in the southern hemisphere, uh, staying warm, <laughs> like Australia, since you are going almost into winter. Um, that's, that's it. I could ramble for longer, but I don't know that anybody's still here at the almost 33 minute mark. But if you, if you are, I love you. Um, but I will try not to be as long with my next video. Long in length and long amount of time in between. But uh, I will talk to you later. Bye.